good job, people. It is now my honor to introduce one of those great Republican candidates that you showed so much support for. Let's have a round of applause for Florida House District 33's new representative, Brett Hay. Brett. Good afternoon, everybody. It's an honor to be here to celebrate this wonderful opportunity. Thank you for your support. Thank you for getting me to where I now stand. And I look forward to working for you folks hard as we head to Tallahassee. So if you would, please stand with me and let's uh, honor the flag and say the Pledge of Allegiance. It's now my privilege to introduce to you folks someone who's become a friend and a mentor to me, our wonderful, our wonderful Senator, Dennis Baxley. Is that without a star or what? Are you tired of winning yet? No. I'm not either. This is a wonderful day of celebration. Thank you and God bless you for caring about this country, caring about Florida, and caring about hometown America right here where we are. All right. Are you ready to see the real people? The big dogs that you put in? Statewide candidates that we won all over the place. It's my privilege to bring to you next a wonderful visitor, a judge, a prosecutor, an iron woman, if I ever saw it, that can protect our freedom and liberty across this great state. Please welcome Judge Ashley Moody, the Attorney General elect. Brandon 
leaves for boot camp in three weeks for the United States Army. So we are celebrating family, as you cannot imagine, during these next three weeks. And we are hunkering down and spending lots of meals together, saying lots of prayers. I hope that you will pray for us and for him especially, but also for the men and women who are serving us that won't be with their families this Christmas. And remember and pray for them and all of the sacrifices that they have made to protect us. So let me just say one more time before I bring on some two very important people. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, please know that Governor-elect DeSantis and I come into this remembering that it was you that got us here and remembering that you expect us to remain true to the ideals of service, accountability, and integrity. And we will do that every day to make you proud. So thank you very much. And now, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing someone who has become a friend over the last year. When I first met this person, I said, wow, that person's got style. I need to get me some of that. And then I heard her speak, and I said, wow, she's got substance, intellect, and most importantly, she loves this state like I love this state. And I think she is going to be an amazing first lady. Please welcome the first lady of the state of Florida, Casey DeSantis. <laughs> But first, let me talk about Ashley. She is a phenomenal human being, and from the first moment that I met her, I knew how special she was. And when I got to know her or her family, her son's getting ready to deploy, I can't thank her enough and her family for their service and the adventure that he's getting ready to embark on. And, um, you know, I'll tell you this about Ashley Moody. She is one heck of a hearts player. If she ever wants to play with you, she is a ringer, and I learned that very quickly. Uh, but it's, it's great because we're good friends, and I think uh, Ron and, of course, Ashley are going to be able to accomplish some great things on behalf of the state of Florida. I know walking out here, I think there was probably a little bit of disappointment in the fact that I don't know how many of you were here last time, but I brought my son with me, my eight-month-old son, who, by the way, is still not sleeping through the night. So 2.45 last night, I'm like, Mason, come on, you know, listen, we got to get up in the morning. We were going to bring them. But we thought it would be just a little bit too much because he was up at 2.45 and then we had to leave the house at 6 a.m. And we said, okay, well, we'll, we'll have him, you know, come next time. And actually, we were reminiscing because we also brought a two-year-old daughter last time and we were uh, talking about how she was running around backstage trying to pull down curtains. And so it's fun. It's neat because we're the first family to have children, young children in the governor's mansion in some 50 years, which is it's, it's exciting. I've been telling everybody that we must protect Florida's irreplaceable historic landmarks and items in the mansion so that Madison doesn't break it. One of the things, they have this beautiful early 20th century wallpaper in the state dining room, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, macaroni and cheese colored crayons, like this is not good. And then there's like this beautiful punch bowl from 1911 from the USS Florida. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, she's going to turn that into a bongo drum. Like, we have to make sure we protect this stuff. But it's neat, and we're going to make sure that we share, obviously, what we do with the children, uh, you know, in the mansion with everyone, because we are here to serve. And we can't thank you enough for what you've done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We would not have this opportunity to serve had it not been for your hard work. And we know what it takes, because we've done just what you've done. We've knocked on the doors. We know how hard that is in the hot Florida sun. And you know how hard it is when someone slams the door in your face, but you have the courage and the guts and the wherewithal to go to the next door. And it makes a difference as we see every vote counts in the state of Florida. And we know how tough it is, too, to pick up the phone. You don't want to do that. There's a million things you could be doing. But you pick up the phone and you make the calls and you get people to come to your side and you tell them about Ron, you tell them about Ashley Moody, you tell them about Jeanette Nunez, and it means a lot. And we cannot thank you enough for that service and sacrifice. And you really have elected a tremendous man, a man who has not only served in the United States Navy, he served in the Congress, He's also served as a federal prosecutor, and I can tell you that from day one, he has always wanted to do this for the right reasons. And I said this when I was here in the campaign trail, and I'll say it again. He's a guy that really believes in his heart when he knows to be right, and he does it. When he says he's going to do something, he actually gets it done. And it's exciting when we look at things like the state Supreme Court 
three picks that he's going to be able to make right out of the gate. I'm excited for what he's going to do, and I'm just so honored and blessed, let me just tell you, for my opportunities to be able to serve the people of Florida. I look at it with integrity and humility and grace and honor. I hope that you are proud of not only me and my husband, but my family, because at the end of the day, it's about service to the people, it's service to you, and we are just blessed and honored that you guys helped us get across the finish line for the future of Florida. So God bless you for that. So you know what's really exciting is in the campaign, I was always saying, you know, our next governor of the great state of Florida, now I can actually say he is the governor of the great state of Florida, the 46th governor of the state of Florida, and I want to welcome my better half, my husband. My best friend in the stage, Ron DeSantis. Thank you so much. It's great to be in America's friendliest hometown. <laughs> And I can just report to you that the only thing better than being elected governor of Florida is being elected twice in two weeks. <laughs> also want to thank Casey. Um, we remember, in fact, I said backstage, I remember my daughter Madison running all over the place. The last time we came here, we did have Mason. Um, but I want to thank her. Uh, for all her sacrifices. Uh, this is never an easy process, generally for, for spouses, uh, but particularly when you have two little ones, and we were juggling a lot, and she really, really did great uh, standing by me uh, every step of the way. So I want to thank her, um, and she's going to be one heck of a first lady for this state. You watch. <laughs> Ashley Moody uh, is, is really going to be terrific as our next Attorney General. I'm very excited for the people of Florida uh, that she's going to be able to serve there. And I was thinking, I mean, you, know, you look at from Casey as First Lady, you have Ashley as Attorney General, Jeanette, my running mate, as Lieutenant Governor. Um, you know, we have a great array of very strong, uh, young, dynamic, conservative women here in the state of Florida. They really represent <laughs> Well, I want to come and just say thank you for standing by me, for the hard work, for turning out the vote here in the villages, which we always need to have uh, in order for Republicans to win. When Rick Scott got re-elected governor in 2014, just four years ago, he got about 2.9 million votes uh, throughout the state of Florida. Uh, I, in 2018, got almost 4.1 million votes. <laughs> We do gain population in Florida. People want to come here, but that, that's only a fraction of that. I mean, the fact of the matter is the Democrats poured everything they have into Florida. They've never targeted a state in a governor's race like they did this year. I mean, it really was in some ways a, a blue wave here. It just, we were able to beat it back, and we were able to do what we needed to do to be able to win, but that was not something that was necessarily preordained. In fact, if you would have gone to me in January and said, Ron, I will guarantee you you'll get 3.5 million votes in November, I would have taken that. I would have taken that, and I would have, that's a lot more than Rick got in 2014. So to think that with the type of turnout we saw, it was almost like a presidential election, and Florida was obviously ground zero, and I'm the only Republican nationwide in an open seat in a swing state who was able to win this year. Um, and you guys are a big reason why. So we are preparing... Uh, to, to uh, We're putting together a new administration. It's a lot of hard work. We're spending a lot of time in Tallahassee now 
Uh, I think I've interviewed over 100 people already and my staff, and we're working on all this because uh, we want to make sure that we have uh, reformers in all these agencies and so that they're doing the people's business in a, in a good way and respecting taxpayer dollars. We're also preparing and we're vetting the 11 candidates that have been sent to me uh, to make three selections for our state Supreme Court, uh, which is really, really important. If you look at Jeb Bush served eight years, Rick Scott served eight years, and in 16 years, they got a combined three picks for the state Supreme Court. So, me, within one day or one week, whenever, you know, we'll make the pick soon, but um, I will have matched them in less than a week. And so it's really, really a huge opportunity to be able to do that and do that well. So really look forward to that. And everything else that, that we have, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, planning out a really busy schedule. I think, uh, you know, Alexander Hamilton said in the Federalist Papers when he was advocating in favor of the, of the ratification of the Constitution that energy in the executive is a leading ca characteristic of good government. And I think the one thing that I'm going to bring is a lot of energy to the job. We're going to be all over the place. We're going to be working very hard. You know, I'm coming from a place in the D.C. swamp in the House of Representatives where one member, it's very difficult to really uh, make much of an impact. Because you can have the best ideas, but if you're not on the right committee or you're not senior enough or you're not in favor with K Street or this or that, then, you know, you may not be able to do it. Well, as governor, you know, I'll be able to set the agenda. I'll be able to get a lot of this stuff done. Um, and so this is night and day from D.C., where too often people won't do what they should be doing, to now here, where if there's things that need to be done on behalf of the state, um, if I can't do it myself, at least I can be the one to put it on the agenda and work with the legislature to get it done. So it's really, really a much more positive posture, and I think if you're somebody that understands that you have an ability to really shape things positively, um, and you really want to get the most of that, I think there's an awful lot that we're going to be able to accomplish. I'm really, really excited uh, to be able to go and get off to, to a strong running start, um, and I think that I think you guys are going to be very happy very quickly uh, when you see some of the, the moves that we're making, and you know, I don't know some of this stuff there's different things that could happen between now and the time I take office. I mean, I was very clear after this whole election thing that I did not want Brenda Snipes presiding over that election. And I think she did the right thing when she tendered her resignation because I think she realized that it was going to be difficult to keep going. Now, Governor Scott has since then uh, suspended her, so, so this may end up going in the legislature. But the bottom line is, is, you know, with this whole process, it was kind of ridiculous because, you know, people throughout the country say Florida can't do this or Florida can't. It was not Florida. We had six, we have 67 counties, and 65 of them did a good job, or at least by and large did a good job, and there's only two counties that have had problems for 25 years that couldn't get it right. So this is not a Florida problem. This is a problem in Broward and Palm Beach counties. You know, Miami-Dade has more people than Broward, more voters. They have all these more languages. It's more diverse, and yet they didn't have any problems uh, with this. And so, um, you know, I worry after having just watched this, and I was always confident in my victory because we were ahead by enough you, know, you can run through the machine. I mean, it's just not going to change uh, that much if you're doing it right. Um, but I was looking to see how you know it kind of uh, it was a it was a it was a stain on the state when people are saying why can't they get their act together? So uh, we're going to clean this up and we're going to make sure it's done right. <laughs> With the. Um, you know, the Supreme Court is, is, is important because I think we've seen with the president when he promised to appoint good, solid, you know, constitutionalist people who understand the rule of law, it does make a difference. And I think we have an opportunity uh, to identify people who understand the difference between judging and legislating. 
And to me, if you don't understand that difference, then you're not going to be somebody that I'm going to select to be on the court. A judge applies the law. The judge doesn't rewrite the law. The judge applies the Constitution. And so I want people that are committed to getting it right, to uh, fidelity to the Constitution, uh, people like... Uh, of Clarence Thomas uh, on the U.S. Supreme Court. I mean, that I think is the direction that we that we need to be going there, um, and, and we will. And it'll be it'll be very very exciting. Um, you know, you also look at things we're going to be able to do to attract more businesses to Florida. Uh, I don't think we've ever been in a better spot. I think people are seeing the effects of the higher taxes in the in the high tax states. Uh, and I think now more than ever, not being able to deduct those high taxes on their federal return. People are going to say, you know what, we need to go somewhere else. And Florida needs to be the landing spot for a lot of these businesses as we want to have more job opportunities. For more work. There'll be stuff we'll do with education. I mean, you know, you talk about uh, being doing vocational training, uh, making sure that's a priority. And not just, although if you look at the traditional uh, Skilled trades, I think, are very important. You can make good money doing that. Uh, but I also consider things like computer science to be vocational now. Because really, for the next 50 years, we know that that type of stuff is going to be very, very important. I mean, you have some states that have really embraced that. Uh, Florida needs to do that and make sure that our folks have those skills they need to succeed. Uh, you know, I'm a big believer in making sure that parents have good choices uh, to find the right school uh, for, their, for their children. It's very important. We're not going to allow things like Common Core uh, in the state of Florida. And we will also have a strong emphasis on the Constitution and American civics in our schools. It's very important. So I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the opportunity. I'm looking forward to being able to, to make a difference. And I'm looking forward to uh, vindicating the trust that, that you all have placed in me. It means an awful lot uh, that you were there for us. Um, not only did the Dems throw everything they had, I mean, and all the, the you, know, you had people from San, I don't know how much money came in from San Francisco, but a lot of money from New York and San Francisco came in. Um, you, you had the national media, MSNBC, CNN, they were took. We, so we did a debate on CNN, and, um, and it was actually, a, yeah, it was a fair debate. I mean, Jake Tapper did a good job, but what happened was, in one part of the debate, uh, my opponent said, now hold on, he said something to the effect of, hold on here, we actually, facts matter, this is CNN, it's not Fox News, and that's, that's what he said uh, in one of the parts, and, and whatever, I mean, I was just, but then I, someone called me the next day, and they say, you know, CNN is using Gillum's uh, statement as a promo for CNN's programming. So they were actually running him over and over again. It's like a free commercial. So, I mean, it was ridiculous. At one point, before that debate, CNN released a poll. And look, we polled it every day. I knew exactly where the race was. Um, but CNN puts out a poll. Gillum leads 55 to 40. And we're like, what? And so we're like, where is this coming from? And so, um, and you know with them, they're trying to shape a narrative, but it was way worse than just that. You look at who they poll in these things, and this poll was something to the effect of, we polled 40% of the sample are likely voters, which, okay, that's a good, because those are the people that are going to vote. 30% are registered Florida voters. Eh, if they're not going to vote, you know, if you're registered, are you going to vote? Maybe not the best to poll two weeks before the election. But then the other 30%, get this, were residents of Florida who are not registered to vote. And I'm thinking to myself, why would that make a difference? And so, so it was very, so we, we were up against a lot, but I think that at the end of the day, uh, you know, when you work hard, when you're, when you're standing on principle, when you're doing the right thing, I think the voters, uh, they see that. I think they saw that in the race, and I think that you know, we now have a, have a really good opportunity to do, do some good things. I'll also say, um, uh, just with regards to some of the things going on nationally, uh, the, the president's selection of Bill Barr as attorney general is a very, very good selection. <laughs> he, was not, 
He was not necessarily somebody on that was on anybody's radar. I mean, he was Attorney General at the tail end of Bush 41's administration. Now, he was a young Attorney General at the time. Has kind of been in the private sector. He's, he's somebody that's done an awful lot in business. Um, but I think he's somebody who really understands uh, the rule of law. Um, I don't think he's going to be bullied by the media or by some of the people. I mean, because you, know, you have half the Senate on the Democratic side are going to run for president. So all these hearings, well, all these hearings are going to be like a circus where they're auditioning to be able to see who can do this, who can do that. And I think he's going to be able to just kind of cut right through that um, and be somebody that is uh, that, that is going to discharge that office in, in a very good way. And so um, I was trying to figure out like who you know who should I recommend to the president this or that, and that was not someone I was even thinking about. Uh, but looking at all the other folks, who many of them were good people, were also considered. Uh, this was the right choice, and I think it'll be. I think he'll do good for us. So I'm excited that uh, to get him confirmed and um, and hopefully be able to really fix the Justice Department because there's there's a lot of problems there, as we know, over the last couple of years. So I'm excited. I'm thankful to have you as supporters and friends. I'm thankful uh, that we have a place like the Villages in the state of Florida. Believe me. We will uh, we will be back, um, you know, to say hello on the other side of the inauguration. By the way, the inauguration is January eighth in Tallahassee. You guys are welcome to come. I mean, you can contact us, and I don't know exactly how the tickets work, but it's an outdoor deal, so I'm pretty sure if you want to come, you'll be able to do it. I asked Jeb Bush about his inauguration in 1999, and the only thing he remembered was that it was nine degrees. So I'm hoping I'm hoping we don't have uh, such a uh, such, such a state of affairs here, but uh, it would be great to see some of you all there. Um, and I just wanted to, I thought it was important to come by and pay a visit and, and just tell you all, Casey and I really thank you. So thank you. God bless you. this new governor. Do you think uh, he's going to survive all of the uh, aggravations of politics? You, you know, he's got the right balance of principles and pragmatism. Yeah. Uh, the guy's a... Uh, he, he's just... He, he's too good to be true at this point. I'm sure I'll be disappointed somewhere along the line. I just can't... And let me tell you, the first lady, when she said he's the better half, he's a great half, but he ain't the better half. She's the best. <laughs> I'm sure he would agree with me on that, all right? All right, thanks, Ralph. Thank you, Vance. Uh, no. Yeah, I'm going to say, this is what we're doing now. I'm going to say, 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 I'